I've got three different background pieces that have driven me to become an activist in this cause. One is that I'm a former high school teacher, and I was getting very frustrated with the hypocrisy that we would have these marvelous professional presentations about responsible use of alcohol. But when it came to cannabis use, the only answer we were allowed to say is no, don't do it. And I found that very frustrating, and I found that that was not providing our youth with the information that they really needed to make educated choices as young adults. I am also the mother of two young adults, so that's another reason why I come to this cause as well. I, in fact, am a non-consumer, but I think it's our responsibility to provide for the next generation an improved system in our society. And if that means changing the law, then that's why I'm here. Yay! I believe that they... I believe that they deserve the freedom to choose what they might want to use in a medicinal fashion, what they might want to use in terms of responsible recreational use. It should be up to them as adults to choose what kind of uh, product they're interested in. And also, the third, the third reason that I'm involved too is because I am a former federal liberal candidate and from that side of things I get more and more frustrated the more and more that our country and Canada here is regressing and even when people are shouting from the state saying no, 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 wait, the war on drugs doesn't work, we did it wrong, don't build bigger jails and yet here we are repeating the same mistakes. So that was my third reason for saying something has to change here. I'm doing a master's in community studies, I study communities and what makes them thrive and work, and I see absolute backwards lack of progress in our country right now. So it drives me to get involved. So we're going to go over to the West Coast first, and I'm going to ask Mrs. Urban Grower from BC, who is our community leader for the province of British Columbia, to tell us a little bit about what drove her to get involved. Hi, everybody. Definitely a different, uh, a different crowd around 420. It was uh, my first time I've actually spoken, and I've usually kind of been uh, in the background as being Mrs. Urban Grower. I've been the one doing lots of the photography. Ah, that's better. Um, so I've been involved in, in a different way, but I, I kind of am I'm getting to the point in my life where my children are growing up, and I've uh, got one left in high school. Um, but I'm also wanting to see, I see what's going on in the high schools and uh, I want my kids to have a chance to uh, learn, get the real education and get the truth about what's really going on here. And unfortunately, the school system isn't there to teach them. And so I got, wanted to get involved because I, I've actually been on a search for a really long time. Even when my kids were much younger, uh, I was trying to figure out how do I talk to them about marijuana? How do I talk to them about drugs? And uh, like like you said, it Andrea, that uh, it was always there's always information there about you know how to you know drink or not binge drinking and all those types of things, but there wasn't information there about for my kids and, uh, and 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 getting properly educated. And I don't think having the police teach our our kids uh, about how to use drugs or not use drugs or to bring a kit in and you know teach them how to do that. But I was got I I, I started seeing that there's there's more. To this whole conversation, then don't do it. And I didn't. It didn't stop me from doing it. That's for sure. I mean, I started doing it when I was 14. Um, no one said back then, "Hey, maybe you should look at what you're putting into your body." And I think that that's the conversation we should be having with our kids: is take a look at what you're putting into your body before you start doing it. Now the kids are into these crazy e pens, and they're just trying to be cool and trying to fit in. Um, and at the same time, why aren't we saying, educate your kid about what you're putting in your bodies? But anyway, uh, the other reason I got involved with this is because I really feel that we have power in, in our communities and getting involved yes. uh, is, is part of what we all need to do. And as I'm you know, getting to that place, I'm so, <laughs> I feel like I can actually step out and I've got lots to say and I've got lots of you know, I can sit there and have a conversation with a woman that's sitting next to me on the plane or, you know, somewhere, and I, and I figure I can actually help one person at a time. And, and right now it is one person at a time. But I see that we can actually talk to people and actually say, okay, you know, so what do you think of this? And, and have the conversation, like I said, one person at a time. Whether it be, you know, having coffee, 
know, with our friends or, you know, getting together. And yeah, it's controversial because when I, when I first heard the concept of legalization, I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Um, how can we talk about that conversation? Um, but we have to be able to do it, like I said, one person at a time. And we want to get, you know, unfortunately right now, I think we're at kind of like a, it's kind of exciting because we're at a, a, a crucial point. And we can actually do something. And we got to figure out how to get it together. Uh, next year's GMM is going to be really, really important. 420 is going to be really important. I'd like to figure out how to really promote uh, our GMM in Vancouver, which is very small. It's only like 200 people, which surprises me. Uh, the 420, on the other hand, is like 25,000, which is only two weeks before. Uh, so we got to figure out how to make that happen more in Vancouver. And uh, I'm sure we can figure that out. Although I think with Jody, though, she's always coming to Toronto. <laughs> so, it's like her second home. So, but uh, if they could make it, we could just sort of figure out a way to get her here fast enough, right? You both, yeah, exactly. But uh, anyway, that's why I got involved. I figure we actually have the ability to do this all together and work. Like, we've got a really important time coming up. We have a federal election. We need to make this a, 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 a tipping point, like a, a, an election issue. And we need to be able to say, look, we don't want the big jails that were private prisons where they want to put, they need to keep 80% capacity so that uh, we can make them justify them. So who are the prisoners that are going to be going in there? It's going to be the pot people, the moms. Do we, does it make sense to put moms in jail for six plants? You know, how, does that, how can we justify all that? So anyway, that's why I got involved was because I've actually been on the art on the other side of the system too, and uh, looking at the possibility of not being around my children and having either foster, you know, the foster care system raise my kids, or having them taken away if I use cannabis. So I'm looking at it now is uh, I got to do something, and this is my way of contributing. And I'm going to keep doing it. So anyway, thank you very much. Mrs. Urban Grover from British Columbia and she actually touched on the idea about that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Keep that thought in mind because that's one one of the three pieces of the, the new campaigns that we're that we are starting out with. So we're next going to go over to Alberta. Our Alberta community leader is Tamara Cartwright and she's going to tell you a little bit about why she got involved. We have one MVP concern or rep MP in the whole province. So anytime we have to go into our MP's office, we're talking to one of Stephen Harper's minions. So for me to walk into Kevin Sorens' office in Crowfoot, uh, which is in Camrose, Alberta, and have him actually admit that alcohol is more harmful than marijuana, I felt that I had made a huge step forward with the Conservatives. Now that's something that we all have to take part in. As women, we are mothers, we're professionals, we're non-professionals, it doesn't matter where you come from. It matters that we have to change this law, whether we're medical or whether we're recreational. We need to divide that, and or not divide that line, we need to come together as medical patients and as recreational users and fight for yes. legalization as one. Yes. Because you know what, there's no line to define us. Yes. We all use for the reasons that we all choose to use. And bottom line, it's freedom. And if we don't fight for our own freedom in this country, we're going to lose it completely. We have seven years of Stephen Harper, have we not? Have you all yes. had enough of Stephen Harper? Yes. We need to even push the vote this year. 33% of Canadians voted in the last federal election. That's astonishingly horrible. Yes. And I'm disgusted with Canadians. When you look at BC's last election, 40%, 48% in the last BC election as well. Shame. We need to have looking at, especially with Alberta, with Conservatives, is that we need swing vote. And I know everybody says, well, we got the ABCs, anything but conservative. But in Alberta, we don't have anything but conservative, we have nothing but conservative. In fact, we took a bale of hay out in last federal election in Lethbridge and put it out with a conservative sign with a big old bow tie on him, and that bale of hay would have won, except Jim Hilliard did. But it wouldn't have mattered because I was a conservative. So the bale of hay could have been conservative, or the guy, I could have, you know, I could have ran as a conservative MP in Lethbridge, Alberta, and I could have won. Because, you know, even with my criminal record for trafficking, with all my possession charges for my medicine, I still could have won because I would have been a conservative. Of course, they would have never let me run because, you know, I'm not some staunch, you know, upstanding, um, I'm not even sure what their persona of what perfection would be. To me, perfection is freedom. For me, it is my children. I have four children and harm reduction for our children. 
children and keeping it off the streets from our children and having a legalized, regulated system where we can all own our own businesses if we choose to. You want to grow, you want to consume, you want to sell, you want to do whatever you want with cannabis, why shouldn't be able to? It's an open market. With Colorado State making it be an open market, it's open market for us in Canada. And we yes. need, like I said, to bring the umbrella together. We have to quit deciphering between medical and recreational, because I'll tell you something. The minute they put a narcotic license or a narcotic sticker on our pot, we are never going to legalize cannabis. Yes. It'll be a narcotic behind a counter with a pharmaceutical label on it, and we're going to be screwed. So until you guys get together, the umbrella us together as one fight for all of us to unite under one umbrella to legalize our plant we are all going to fail at this and divided we all know we fail so thank you very much and i'll pass this off to somebody else and that's yeah. 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 thank you very much tamara who is speaking passionately living in alberta which is an even greater challenge so thank you we appreciate all the contributions out there um tamara has mentioned some of the issues gel all of us together as a normal Women's Alliance of Canada. We believe a very simple statement. We believe that, that the regulation and taxation of cannabis in Canada would protect our youth, it would keep our neighborhoods safer, and it would even provide to the Canadian economy. So if you believe those th three things, and you are a woman who has not yet visited our table, I encourage you to please do so at the end of our session. Grab one of these little cards that has our website on it because our website is our key source of information. You'll get all the latest information about our events and any kind of campaigns we're doing at our website. And there you'll see a join page. And if you can please click on that join page and you'll read that statement, that very simple statement, we ask for your name and your postal code so that when we go and talk to our MPs, we can say we are speaking on behalf of women from coast to coast to coast who believe that our country would be better off with a system of regulation and taxation. So we're going to move on now to Joey, who is over here in our own province of Ontario, and she is working in the Toronto area as one of our community leaders, so she's going to tell you why she got involved. How's it going, everybody? Thanks for coming. This is an awesome event that we're supporting here, and I really love seeing the gathering, and that we're not empty here. There's people listening to us. We need to pass that word along one by one. Um, it's kind of how I got involved. I was never a sick person. I've never really been a, you know, I never needed wheat to, to be alive, but I have in a weird way. Um, but I come from the recreational side, even the more subversive side of things. Everyone knows I make pot food for a living. And in order to do that, well, where do I gotta get the stuff to make the pot food? Well, I gotta go to the underside of life. And I see a lot of that, that, you know, all these guys with lots of big fat wads of cash. There's a lot of that in the world. And just as much as the politicians don't want it legal, a good lot of them don't want it legal either. You'd be surprised how many people in our industry don't understand all you gotta do once it's fully legal, a distributor is a distributor, whether you distribute cannabis or whether you distribute cars or cheese or anything else that you get your permits for. So I want the underside of the world to understand that we can make a lot of money. The alcohol industry survived the depression, they survived prohibition, and now there's companies like Seagram's flaunting it in their advertising, like, oh yeah, me surprised, blah, blah, blah. Well, that just means you just admitted that you sold alcohol illegally during a certain time period. Well, that's awesome, because now, you know, there's people who can drink responsibly, it's happening in their world, so it should happen in ours. So it's not that I don't believe in medical marijuana, I totally believe in it. I, in fact, when I see legalization, I like to see tax exemption going on and people still allowed to grow their own, just as much as you're allowed to brew your own beer, just as much as you're allowed to go to the liquor store to buy it or to go to a bar. Um, sometimes a cold beer on a hot day for a construction worker is medicine. That's kind of the end of that story, just as much as a joint is. So I want to see it just like alcohol, the same. But at the same time, we have to keep our medical people in mind when we're doing that. Because taxing and regulating is awesome because we could really use that revenue. Uh, but at the same time, I don't see my friends get screwed because now they got to go to the liquor store and buy their pot and pay exorbitant tax on their medicine. 
So she's right, we need to band it under one banner. Um, I'd like to see it fully recreationally so all these beautiful businesses out there can make their millions of dollars and pay our taxes. I fucking want that in our country. I want that tax money here. There's a lot of it, I see it. Fat wads of cash for the government. I don't know why they don't see that, but they do. That's not the joke. Anyway, what we want to do though is make sure one by one out there have a conversation that it's awesome and it's beautiful and there's legal, there's nothing wrong with it. We're all preaching the choir here. Talk to the people in the coffee lineups. Talk to the people on the street. Talk to the people at the bus stop. At the airport, anyway. We got these little green pins. It's just a little green dot. She's gonna get to that in a minute. But it's a very important thing in my mind to have these conversations quietly. Anyway, uh, I'm Joey Puff Mama. That's it, I guess. Talk to Andrea. Each of these women are coming up with unique reasons why they've gotten involved, and yet there's always yeah. that common element that all of us share, that we see the value of ending prohibition of cannabis in Canada. We're going to go to our final introduction all the way over at the other, uh, the other side there. This is our East Coast representation. This is Debbie Stoltz Giffen, Yay! and she has long been providing lots of leadership for us out in Nova Scotia. Thank you. Yay, it's a pleasure Debbie. to be here. Uh, and nice to see so many folks in here this afternoon. I've you. been involved in cannabis activism, uh, particularly in the medical cannabis realm for 14 years. But over the course of time, um, I've come to believe that legalization is the only way to go. It's the only way that, uh, that makes any sense. Maintaining prohibition costs $2 billion a year, uh, money that we simply don't have. Every time we turn around, the Harper government is making cuts here and making cuts there, trying to pare things back. And here's prohibition, staring them in the face, sucking and draining $2 million out of our economy on an annual basis. And out of my pocket, out of your pockets, our neighbors' pockets, well, they're busily trying to shove people in jail for six months for six plants. How ridiculous is that when, when the war of drugs has been a colossal failure from the get-go yes. and all they're doing is continuing to ramp it up and persecute people for using a harmless, non-toxic plant. Shame. How ridiculous is that? Shame is right, Allison, for sure. The government should be ashamed, and it's up to us as individuals to move this forward. Talk to your politicians, as the other ladies have been saying. Talk yes. to your neighbors, your families, your friends, and make sure that cannabis is an issue in the next election. Make sure that the politicians know that we're not interested in maintaining a failed policy. Yes. We're, we're tired of their ideological approach. We want a more scientific policy based on cannabis in this country. Yes, one yeah. that will benefit the citizens, one that will keep our people out of jail, and in the end, as Tamara and Joey have both said, patients will be protected. We'll have, a, we'll have an ability through legalization to grow plants, to produce our own medicine in the case of patients, or, or cannabis for recreational people to consume as well in, in their homes. So to me, legalization is the only thing that makes sense. Um, I became involved uh, because I am a patient initially. Cannabis, cannabis was the only thing that worked for me as, as medicine. Um, but as I was starting to discover that, we, we had been raided, uh, busted. My husband and I both charged, and I'm a mother of four children, now a grandmother of two as well. And I really don't want to see my family, my children, my grandchildren have to go through the same level of stress uh, if they choose to use cannabis, wondering when the knock on the door is going to come or more than likely the foot to the door is going to come and, and their home filled with law enforcement trying to turn their lives upside down and rip their lives apart. It simply has to end. The policy is ineffective, it's far too costly, and it's time for change, folks. So get out there and make your voices heard. 
thank you very much, Debbie. You can see why these wonderful women here and the others in our volunteer network are part of our leadership because they're passionate about the cause and they want to make sure that that message gets out. I'm going to go into three, briefly, into three of our brand new campaigns which are meant to do just that, getting the message out. And the ladies have all mentioned how it's one-on-one -on -one conversations and it's outreach beyond the cannabis community as well as organizing the cannabis community. And this is how we hope, as a Normal Women's Alliance of Canada, we can help contribute to that. One is the pin that Joey mentioned, and you'll find that everybody up here is wearing them, and I've got mine here. My dress is a little busy, but if you can see it there, you're going to see just a nice, subtle, normal green pin in the center, and it's got a little silver edge to it. We also have them in gold as well, so you can style it with your jewelry, or men, you can style it with whatever color watch you're wearing. And what we're doing is we're doing this simple lapel pin as our conversation starter. So there's no logo on it. So ideally, if you're wearing this, people will say, what is that pin about? And all of a sudden, you have an opportunity in your daily going about to bring up the conversation. Oh, well, this is because I believe that the prohibition of cannabis needs to end in Canada. Voila, now you've opened the conversation up and you can continue to dialogue with that neighbor, with that family member, or wherever you are. This is one of the, the, the pieces that we'll be continuing to use when we meet with all of our MPs across the country as well. When our MPs and senators are showing support for our movement, they too can, can support this pen to keep the conversations going. But it's the key part of this is that there is no logo on it. Because we do appreciate that in some people's lives, it's not always the best time to bring up a cannabis. Well, business is blossoming at a hydroponic shop in B.C. Sales have been smoking hot ever since two U.S. states legalized marijuana. And the company, called Green Planet, carries everything anyone would need to grow plants, any kind of plants, indoors. In Colorado, it is now legal to have six marijuana plants in a secure area.